What is up everyone and welcome to an awesome little video. You're joining me here up in my studio which is where I'm currently storing my G4 MDD. This is my maxed out 1.42 GHz PowerPC Promise machine and I'd like to officially announce that please don't panic. Um, this machine will be put to use very soon. Whether it'll be in the illegitimate series or whatever happens, I do feel bad every single morning I wake up. I feel bad about not going through with this series of videos, but I just cannot begin to describe how hard it's been to try and pull it off. Um, but anyway, as you guys can see, I've still got the machine, but it is a little bit gutted at the moment. It is not 100% together. I stole the SSD to use with my Hackintosh, and I'm keeping the, um, the adapter caddy drive thing separate keeping it safe for the screws in it. Um, I stole that to do some troubleshooting with my Hackintosh, and today I'm also going to be stealing the hard drive and the optical drive out of this system. Now, this is no big deal, guys. I'll explain exactly why I'm doing this right after the intro. So, I am doing this, guys, because I'm doing a DVD project for someone. I'm doing a load of wedding videos, and they actually want Lightscribe, um, which is a feature that I only have on this DVD drive, because I ordered it specifically all the way from OWC in America, um, because it is the nicest IDE drive that I could find to put in this machine. And as you guys know, I was doing a no expense spared, really nice upgrade to this G4. Um, so right after I'm finished with it, I will be putting the drive back in here, or at least putting the drive from my Mac Pro back in here, which is also an IDE drive. Um, so if we just remove this, it's been a long time since I've worked on an MDD, guys. The last time was when I was fiddling with this one to get ready for the PowerPC Promise, which was a good couple of years ago now. But there we have it. There is the um, drive caddy removed for now. Now, the reason why I'm stealing the hard drive is because I do actually have a fairly valuable drive in here. Valuable to me, anyway. This is a Western Digital Caviar Black 2 terabyte drive. I originally bought a green to put in this system, um, but I've got a black in here now um, because it was I had it spare from doing my um, from doing something. Anyway, I can't remember. But as I've been doing the Hackintosh series, I need more space. So this entire video is going to be me putting this stuff into my Mac Pro. Now, don't worry guys, this 2 terabyte drive will probably not be going back in here because it's just it's just totally overkill and not needed. But the 1 terabyte drive or some kind of fast SATA hard drive will make its way back in here for whatever happens with the PowerPC Promise series of videos. And I actually managed to get that pretty stuck to the heat sink then. This probably isn't an ideal way to do it, guys. But um, just taking the hard drive out. Basically, what I'm doing is I do have a 2 terabyte Caviar Green in my Mac Pro at the moment. And I've got it in there. This That, that was the drive I bought for this machine originally. Um, and I don't, know, I don't know why they ended up getting swapped. But anyway, whoops, that was a bit bad. Um, but yeah. I want to use the black in my Mac Pro because it's quicker and I want to archive the 2TB green because I've, I've decided to use 2TB green drives for archival purposes and I will be ordering more to offload data on because I want to slim down the amount of active drives that I use from day to day because as it stands at the moment I use about seven hard drives actively every day and I want to slim that down to just the drives in my workstation which is the RAID 0 one terabyte blacks um, in my Hackintosh, as you guys know. Well, it will be soon anyway. Um, and also uh, some kind of file server setup. So here's the two terabyte black that I'm going to pinch back for my Mac Pro. This is a good couple of years old now, but it's uh, still going strong. Hopefully I sh probably should not have jinxed it. Now, the only slight thing is I don't want to lose any of the screws. So what I'm probably going to do is put a dummy hard drive in here for now. Um, just to keep the screws in place. I know it sounds ridiculous and you'd think I'd have a better organization strategy, but I really don't. So, um, all I'm going to do now is remove the optical drive, but before I do that, I'm going to find a hard drive to put in here as a dummy. Well, I didn't even need to pause the camera, guys. I found this old Western Digital 80 gigabyte IDE drive, which will do absolutely fine. Um, but yes, I believe I covered everything. I believe I mentioned absolutely everything that I wanted to mention. There are probably a couple of other things that I'll get around to mentioning um, later on in the video, but the cool thing is actually that I will touch on is this drive caddy still has the four, four additional screws. Um, what's really cool about Max, and I'll explain this if some of you 
have never got an old Power Mac or whatever. What's really cool is any upgrade that you wanted to do, Apple provided the screws for you and they were always hidden somewhere in the machine. So take a look at this, um, this for example. These four screws here are actually designed um, for you to unscrew them and then you can add the second hard drive. Now I've saw screws from somewhere else by the looks of it because I haven't used these ones. Um, but the same goes for the G5. They're just a little bit more obvious in the G5. They're actually rowed up in specifically drilled holes. Um, these are specifically drilled obviously, but they're actually rowed up in the G5 and they're nice screws, nice rubbery, rubber dome grippy screws that you need for the G5. And um, Macs have got a couple of cool little hidden secrets like that in them. Uh, if there's a uh, common upgrade that is to allowed to be done on a pro machine, um, such as hard drives, then they will include what exactly what you need, um, which is really cool. But of course with the Mac Pro, something like the aluminium cheese grater Mac Pro, you obviously get the hard drive trays. So that's um, that's pretty much what they have in solution for that. So there we go. I've got a dummy hard drive in there, guys, just so that I don't lose the screws. And it seems like a bit of wasted effort, but it really is worth it um, because losing screws sucks. And that's really not good. I also have another drive enclosure here. Not sure if it has the screws or not, but yeah, whatever. So I'll put the two terabyte to one side and let's get out this optical drive. Now the same goes for the optical drive, guys. Check this out. We have two screws there and the other two would go there. That would be to add the second drive. Now, as you can see, half of these are missing, but that's okay. Um, at least it gives us somewhere safe to maybe put the other two. I'm not too sure, but we'll take out this drive. Now, I don't want to talk too much because this video will end up being very long, but if you don't know what Lightscribe is, guys, Lightscribe is basically, um, you buy specific Lightscribe discs that have nothing on the top, and you've got your Lightscribe drive, and you can use a piece of software such as, I use Disk Cover RE, I think it's called, RE2, um, which is the disk covering application that comes with Toast Titanium 10, and probably newer and older versions. Um, and it, you can set it up in a Lightscribe mode, and it will burn, using the, the DVD drive, it will burn some kind of a label on the DVD. Now these are kind of limited. They're not color, and they're not really high def or anything like that. They're literally just kind of like gray, laser etched, um, you know, burnings onto the, onto the DVD. Um, now, it is really not ideal. It is not the most professional thing at all. But I tell you one thing, guys, it is a damn sight better than having a Sharpie um, DVD handed to you. It looks so much more professional. And um, it's not something that I do very often, as you guys can probably tell. I've had to take the entire drive out of another computer. That's how rarely I do it. <laughs> um, uh, I've actually only done a Lightscribe thing once before, I believe. But I am quite excited to do it. Now, we do have a little bit of a problem here, guys. I know I'm jumping from topic to topic, but I've got four spare screws and only um, two screw holes. So a dummy optical drive, which I have right next to me in this set of computer parts is definitely ideal. So I know some of this will probably be out of the frame for you guys. But yes, also by using these dummy components, ow, I just jammed a bit of my hand in the enclosure. Using these dummy components actually makes me feel slightly less bad. You know, I worked very hard on this MDD and I spent a lot of money on it. So to leave it completely bare with, um, strip back components feels odd but you've got to do what you've got to do I'm afraid and right now I need to sort out my drive scenario and for that I need to offload a load of data from my caviar green drive onto my caviar black drive so that I can put put older data on my green drive stick it in an anti-static bag label it up and put it on the shelf I've actually got proper anti-static archival drive little um, cases, things that I'll show you later maybe, or in a future video. Um, they are really good. So that is my basic plan, guys. I did announce on Facebook that I will be doing a couple of videos based around data um, management and stuff, and this is the very early stages of me sorting out all of my data, which is, which is great because it's something I've needed to do for a very, very long time. It's not a very nice process, and I will be spending a lot of money on this, um, let's plug it in guys, why not? Let's push the boat out. I will be spending a lot of money on this in terms of um, components for the server and everything, 
but it's all gonna be worth it because it's getting to the stage now where I need a proper storage solution. I need proper archived data, otherwise in a blink of an eye, I could lose an entire terabyte or two terabytes worth of data and I've really messed something up, um, which is not good, especially now that I'm getting paid to do lots of work that um, involves carrying around lots of data. Um, well, not carrying around, but you know, having lots of data stored on my system. I'd hate to be responsible for losing someone's video, for instance. Um, so I've just got to be very careful. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I, I haven't lost anything yet, right? I'm probably tempting fate here. You know, touch wood. Uh, I haven't lost anything yet, but I have to be very careful. I always make triple backups of, you know, clients, SD cards and DVDs or whatever beforehand, um, just so that I don't really screw things up. And if I had like a stable backup solution already in place, then I wouldn't have to do time consuming specific tasks like that. And I could use the time more wisely to do other projects. So that is that, that is my MDD successfully gutted. Let's close her up. We don't need anything in there anymore because I've basically stripped it all out. Here we have the drive, lovely drive. It is a light scribe drive, at least I hope I am not imagining things. It probably is. Oh God, I hope to God it is. There's that. And I also have my two terabyte drive. So in today's video, we are going to be putting these in the Mac Pro and also doing a little bit of graphics card maintenance within the Mac Pro. All right, guys. So here is the Mac Pro. I've got the two terabyte drive. Um, I've got the spare drive sled, which is in dire need of some restoration. I do have a couple of other screws. Um, I've got the optical drive, but most importantly, I've got the machine itself. Now, before we fiddle around with anything, I'm going to put the door to one side. And before we fiddle with hard drives and stuff, I'm going to sort out this graphics card scenario. Um, this is at one moment in time that I really do appreciate YouTube comments sometimes, um, because people made me aware of the fact that the slot that I have the 2600 XT in is a 4x slot. Now I'm not an expert with PCIe slot speeds or whatever, but I do know that 4x is one hell of a lot slower than 16x. So I don't know how much that would impact my speeds, um, but I have noticed a little slowdown with this guy. Now I'm used to the GT640. Um, I really don't know what to say about the situation in general guys, but all I'm going to do is move it down one slot and uh, the GT640 doesn't get very hot at all anyway. I know this looks like very restricted airflow. People suggested that I put the um, 2600 XT in the bottom slot and then cover it with the GT640 but then the tiny fan on here on a card that does get quite hot will be blocked. Um, but if I can actually line it up, it's pretty hard to see. If I can line it up. Okay, here we go. So I've lined it up there and it does it does choke the fan a little, but that'll be okay. It's not actually rubbing on it. Um, and of, as long as I make sure that the card is pushed up when I tighten this bracket, we should be in the money, guys. We should be in the money. So that is the uh, graphics card down one slot. We'll see if that makes any difference. And I had to do this off camera, sorry guys, because I was fumbling around a little bit. Um, I've got some missing screws and stuff on this caddy, so I managed to get it pretty secure with one of the one of the remaining screws. This is the two terabyte black going in. This won't be in the fourth slot forever. Um, there's two terabyte green in there that I'll be taking out eventually. So that's in. As you guys can see, this two terabyte green. I'll be moving all the data from this onto the two terabyte black, and then uh, repurposing this drive with a two terabyte chunk of data that I want to just put on the shelf out of the way that I do not need to access. So, and if anyone's wondering, in there is my SSD and in there is my one terabyte caviar black. Next thing for us to do is take out this little thing, which was actually a nightmare to get in and out last time. I can't even remember why I did it, but here it is. And let's take this off. And the idea is, we take out this optical drive, put in the other one, and that is us, job done. So I'm just gonna, ah, and this is a good example of the thing I was talking about with the screws, guys. 
four additional screws that Apple have included for the bottom drive. It's just cool little things like that that I really, really like. So let's get this one unscrewed. I guess I could put it in the bottom slot. Do you know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to put it in the bottom slot. I'm going to keep this optical drive in place. Stuff it. I've never had two optical drives in the machine before, so why not do something different? And that's probably not the way it goes in. It probably goes in this way. Awesome. Two optical drives. This is going to be really cool. Well, guys, that was a little bit of a struggle, but we got there in the end. Let's pop the side panel door back on. This is probably the last time I'll be doing anything to this Mac Pro um, because I'll have a Hackintosh to worry about now. But yeah, I'll be doing this one last project on this Mac Pro, this wedding video project, and then that is uh, the Mac Pro services done, I believe. But I do need to sort out that data and stuff. So let's pop it back down, plug it all in, power it on, and see if it, uh, see if it all works. Well, I failed to capture that, but that was indeed a boot screen and hey, we are booted up pretty much. Where's the center display then? Magnificent, where the heck is that? Well guys, after a bit of faff, we are back up and running. And one cool thing is, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, I'll zoom in. Um, both the optical drives are detected. Now, the only thing is, um, I don't know what happened with the displays there. I just had to restart a couple of times and plug them in and unplug them and stuff, but whatever. Hopefully it's back to normal now. If I go to the ATA bus, um, we've actually got... Hang on a second. It's only seeing one... It's only seeing... It's only seeing one of the drives by the looks of it, but there is actually two opening when I eject, which is okay. Um, disc burning... Uh, okay. Interesting, interesting. Well, I'll see... I'll see how it works, guys, but, um... Yeah, there's all the drives. There's the two ports on the motherboard. Interesting. Okay, guys. Well, that's probably been a successful upgrade. We'll see how everything goes. Uh, the drive is detected, as you guys can see. Two terabyte storage. Exactly what I wanted. It's still got a load of stuff on there as well, which is cool. So, everything is all good. Um, probably successful. I will update you guys in a future video if something is wrong, but um, I think we're on to a winner here. Both the drives are jacked anyway, so we should be good to go there. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.